Lake Mead and Lake Powell are the two largest reservoirs in the United States, and together they form the core of water storage and distribution along the Colorado River system. Their levels change constantly throughout the year due to seasonal water use, upstream management decisions, and operational requirements for power generation and downstream deliveries. Lake Mead's current elevation is 1,057.17 feet above mean sea level, recorded on November 13, 2025. This measurement places the reservoir 171.83 feet below its full pool elevation of 1,229 feet. Although this difference may appear large, full pool is rarely reached in modern operation, and the lake is not expected to remain anywhere near full capacity. What matters in practice are the operational thresholds related to power generation and downstream water deliveries. The current level remains above the critical thresholds needed for Hoover Dam to generate hydropower and for the reservoir to fulfill its scheduled water allocations. The 2025 graph for Lake Mead shows a smooth, predictable seasonal pattern. At the beginning of the year, the lake sat near 1,064 feet before gradually rising through January and February into early spring. This early year rise is consistent with typical reservoir operations, when upstream releases may increase slightly and downstream demand is relatively low due to cooler temperatures and reduced agricultural use. By March, the lake reached its 2025 peak above 1,068 feet. After the early spring high point, the lake began a steady decline. This downward trend accelerated through April, May, and June, reflecting increasing water consumption throughout the southwest. As temperatures rise, electricity demands increase, prompting Hoover Dam to release more water for hydropower generation. Agricultural districts require more water for irrigation. Municipal usage also rises. All of these factors push Lake Mead downward through the warmest months of the year. By the middle of summer, Lake Mead dropped below 1,055 feet. The lowest point of the year shows up in July, a period when release volumes are at their highest and inflows from upstream decrease. This combination always produces a midsummer low point, and it happens nearly every year. In August, the reservoir's decline slowed, and by late August and early September, a small rebound appears on the graph. This slight rise is often the result of managed upstream releases, especially from Lake Powell, designed to stabilize Mead in late summer as yearly operational schedules shift. During September and October, Mead maintained a relatively stable position between 1,057 and 1,058 feet. This kind of fall stabilization happens frequently. It reflects a combination of reduced water demand and carefully controlled releases from Glen Canyon Dam. The most recent daily change shows a slight decline of 0.05 feet, which is completely normal within the day-to-day -day fluctuations caused by power generation scheduling and municipal withdrawals. Moving upstream to Lake Powell, the reservoir currently sits at 3,544.60 feet above mean sea level as of November 12, 2025. This level is 154.40 feet below full pool, which is defined at 3,700 feet. Like Lake Mead, Powell rarely approaches full capacity in modern operation, and the reservoir's primary operational concern is its minimum power pool elevation, which determines whether Glen Canyon Dam can generate electricity. At its current level, Powell remains safely above that threshold, allowing normal hydropower generation to continue. The 2025 graph for Powell begins with a gentle but steady decline throughout January, February, and March. This happens almost every year because inflows from the Colorado, Green, San Juan, and other tributaries remain low during winter. Snow in the upper basin remains stored in the mountains, so only limited water reaches the reservoir. During this period, Glen Canyon Dam still releases water downstream to meet obligations, so Powell experiences a gradual winter drawdown. The lowest point of the year appears in late spring, when Lake Powell reaches an extended plateau around 3556 feet. 
This is the point at which upstream inflows have not yet risen, but downstream deliveries must continue. During these weeks, reservoir managers coordinate releases carefully to ensure Lake Mead receives the water it needs while avoiding unnecessary drawdown that could bring Powell closer to operational limits. As summer arrives, inflows increase due to seasonal snowmelt and runoff from the upper basin. This produces the mid-year rise seen in the graph, lifting the lake to around 3562 feet in June and July. Although this rise is moderate rather than dramatic, it is part of the reservoir's normal annual cycle and demonstrates the influence of upper basin tributary flows. The summer rebound helps offset earlier declines and provides additional flexibility for later year operations. After midsummer, the reservoir begins another slow, controlled decline. This late year decrease continues through August, September, and October, as releases from Glen Canyon Dam support both hydropower generation and the downstream water deliveries required through interstate agreements. By early November, the lake steadied at 3544.60 feet, with a daily decline of about 0 0.10 feet. As with Lake Mead, this kind of minor day-to-day -day movement is part of the normal operational rhythm. An essential part of understanding the data is recognizing how the two reservoirs interact. Lake Powell delivers water to Lake Mead through scheduled releases, and these releases are governed by legal frameworks often referred to collectively as the Law of the River. When Powell releases more water, Mead benefits and may stabilize or rise. When Powell releases less, Mead's decline sharpens. The graphs for 2025 show clear coordination. Powell's midsummer releases coincide with Mead's late summer stabilization. Both reservoirs are linked through deliberate, highly managed operations rather than natural flow alone. Another factor that influences both lakes is hydropower generation. Hoover Dam and Glen Canyon Dam produce electricity for millions of users across the southwest. Hydropower requires water to pass through turbines, so water levels are affected by regional energy demand. When temperatures are high, power demand increases, which accelerates outflows. During cooler seasons, power generation decreases, allowing reservoirs to slow their decline or even rise slightly depending on inflows. The subtle daily changes visible in the graphs reflect these operational adjustments. Looking at the broader 2025 pattern, both reservoirs exhibit stable, predictable behavior under current operational rules. Lake Mead shows an annual rise, a summer downturn, and an autumn stabilization. Lake Powell shows a winter drawdown, a midsummer rebound, and a fall decrease. These patterns repeat year after year, shaped by water allocations, hydropower operations, and seasonal consumption cycles across the region. Despite being significantly below full pool, both reservoirs remain above key operational thresholds, allowing power generation and downstream water deliveries to continue. The system is functioning as designed, with carefully measured releases and consistent coordination between upstream and downstream reservoirs. The smoothness of the graphs indicates that the system is not experiencing sudden shocks or disruptions. Instead, it is following a well-managed seasonal cycle. As the region moves into late 2025 and early 2026, several indicators will be important to watch. Lake Mead typically stabilizes or rises slightly during the winter months as water demand decreases. Lake Powell usually reaches its lowest point near late winter, followed by a spring rise as upper basin inflows increase. While the exact details will evolve based on operational decisions, the current trajectories of both lakes suggest that reservoir managers are maintaining control over the system and balancing water deliveries with power generation needs. Lake Mead and Lake Powell together support millions of people, vast agricultural regions, and major energy production facilities. Their water levels are more than numbers. They determine power generation irrigation schedules, and municipal supply planning. The 2025 data shows a system operating according to plan, with each reservoir reflecting the operational decisions made to maintain stability and reliability throughout the year. Continued monitoring will provide insight into how these patterns evolve, 
But for now, the behavior of both lakes remains consistent with long-standing management practices.